Welcome to week six of the Stronger Gymnastics series. If you're new to this series, make sure you go back and start at week one to get the most out of it. This week is much shorter than usual as I only had three training sessions. I'll explain why shortly, but first, let's answer some questions from last week. Tiger Woods, mate. Pleasure to see you watching the videos. Perhaps now that you're coming near the end of your golfing career, you're considering taking up gymnastics, and that sounds like a fantastic idea. He asks, oh dude. One question, do I keep my head lined up with my spine looking at my toes in a handstand or face the floor? You can do it both ways to practice balance. However, from a gymnastics perspective, ideal form is to have your ears tucked between your shoulders. So you do keep your chin tucked in to a degree, but you should still be able to see the floor through the top of your eyebrows. Price Rowland asks, what do you do for cardiovascular conditioning? I don't do anything specific for cardiovascular training. It actually just happens as a result of my gymnastics training. So one example would be with tumbling on the floor. If you haven't done it before, you mightn't be aware, but it takes a lot out of you and you really start breathing hard after doing just a few passes. Anytime I'm tumbling, I'd say I'm getting cardiovascular training. Same with vault, just sprinting to the vault and popping off it. Uh, also, another example would be on the pommel horse. If I'm ever going for endurance circles, when you start to do higher numbers, like 20, 30, 40 circles, it starts to become a cardio workout where you start breathing really heavily and you get quite puffed out. So it's also interesting because it's an upper body cardio most of the time people do like running or something. So I don't do any running or jogging or walking. All my cardio training is included in the incredible sport of men's artistic gymnastics. Another thing that I do, it's not because I want to do cardio, it's purely for efficiency, is I ride my bike to gymnastics. I get warm traveling to gymnastics. So when I arrive, I'm, I've got a light sweat, my legs are warmed up, my body's quite warm. So it's just so efficient because I need to get there anyway and riding there means that when I get there I'm already warmed up. So I'd recommend if you're not too far from your gymnastic centre you should ride there. Side note on that, when I was living in Canada in 2010 I would ride to gym there as well. I'd catch a train, a bus and then I'd ride. Now even in the snow I would ride just because it's more efficient than walking and if it's not snowing it's really not that bad. So no excuses guys. They're the questions for this week. If you have anything else you wanna know, leave a comment below and I'll answer it next week. Now I'm sorry to have kept you sitting there. You must have been thinking, why is this shorter than the other weeks? Why is he doing less training sessions? Well, don't sit there in anxiety anymore. Let's find out in week six. We are back. Due to a few abnormal things happening, such as a public holiday over the weekend, I wasn't able to train Saturday afternoon like I normally do, and also Sunday at Olympic Park. And then Monday was off due to the public holiday. I also don't train on Tuesdays. Well, I've missed three sessions that I would normally have, um, and I haven't trained for three days in a row, which is very abnormal for me. I normally train with a maximum one day off, so, yeah, I feel it's weird. It really isn't that long, three days, but it feels like a week or so since I last trained. Of course, I've been stretching every single day anyway, and I, I feel like I've made some really good progress, actually. Maybe because I haven't been running and tumbling and all that like I normally would. Um, it's given my muscles a little bit more time to sort of relax. I've still been doing Olympic lifting, but splits is feeling better. Still haven't got it, and I'm thinking now I really need to start getting very close. Been keeping up my strength, it's getting better slowly and also my shoulder, it's still I'm not going to say it's 100% but it's getting better. I've finally been able to start doing stick dislocates again. It's certainly not painful to do it but I can feel that it could be painful if I pushed it too much. So that's coming along slowly. I'm getting pretty frustrated about how slow it is but trying to be patient at the same time. I think that um, my left shoulder pain from a couple sessions ago was from doing bench press. Probably about three nights ago when I did bench press, I could feel a little bit of pain in my left shoulder, so I stopped, which again is really annoying. Why do I keep 
Recently, I feel like I keep having these small injuries that stop me from doing particular exercises. It's really starting to annoy me. I haven't had this before. So I can only imagine it's due to my increased mobility, flexibility training for my shoulders and they're adjusting to this new range of motion. With these three days off, instead of just doing nothing, I've been using them to train things that I wouldn't normally train. So I've, I've uh, made it into a positive in that sense. And one of those exercises I've been working on is um, stole the press. I've just been doing the exercise where I put my hands on the floor and lift my legs, doing 20 reps. Each day it's feeling slightly more comfortable, so um, yeah, I'm going to keep working that as well. And I think that's going to really help me get my stall to press. Again, I've had a lot going on in my life, work related. It's taking up all of my spare time, which is very annoying and kind of stressful as well. You know, I definitely need gymnastics to, to take my mind off of that and to relax me and make me happy, otherwise I'd just be too stressed out and I wouldn't be happy. So I'm feeling a tiny bit stressed right now, maybe a little bit frustrated as well just because of other things. This session will be good, I'm sure, to help me get back into that happy, exuberant young lad that we've all come to hold so dearly. Yeah. So let's get stuck into it. You'll remember this exercise from last week when I also used it as a warm up. I really liked how it was a challenging but not intense way of warming up. It activates most of the muscles in your body, combining strength and flexibility. I also feel a nice pump after completing this. I wouldn't count that last rep as complete if I didn't finish that last negative. That second one I was crazy up there too. I've just got to... I'm really quite ashamed that I fail a simple giant every now and then. This just shows that I still don't fully understand it. And the reason I'm including these clips is to give you a really accurate snapshot of my current ability. I'm happy with how my caster handstand has now improved and I'm not collapsing through my shoulders on the swing down as much as I used to. I'm still not quite hitting the handstand through the giant however, so as always, this is my focus. I need to block more when coming over the top. I'm very happy with my top change progress. I wasn't quite finishing the turn, though it was improving each set. In this last set, it looked like I could have gianted out if I held on, so I think I'm now very close to achieving this. I really wanted to hold on to this one, but I hadn't completed the turn properly, so there was no point in hanging on. They did the end of the full ball, and then, yeah, straight jump. That's it. Looking back, this really annoys me. This turn was definitely good enough to hang on. I just wasn't courageous enough to do so. I really don't like to admit that, but really, I have no excuse. Layouts were really bad today. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I just don't feel it or understand it. I just need to spend more time thinking about it, practicing it, and analyzing my attempts. Back up rise to handstand was also not feeling great today, though fortunately, between sets, 
I really thought about what I had to do and I started completing them successfully with Charles' spot. They continued to improve with each consecutive attempt. Working on stolder progressions, I alternated between sets of single bar presses and roll to straddle sit. This exercise is a great way to develop your mobility and strength for straddle sit if you aren't already able to hold a straddle sit. It allows you to momentarily feel the position. As you improve, you should hold the position for increasingly long periods before rolling out. I'm starting to grow a little frustrated with my lack of progress on flares. They're getting higher and more powerful in general, though I clearly get to halfway and then the power is completely misdirected. The critiques are that I need to get my hips higher in the front, extend my right leg outwards at the front and lean a lot more over my right arm. I find it really helpful to compare my flares to someone that can actually do them. Dan recently achieved them, so his aren't yet perfect, but you can clearly see the difference in how he gets his hips up and his right leg out. Front splits on both sides hasn't really improved since last week. While my middle splits is about the same, if not a little higher than last week, I'm getting more comfortable in the position, which I'm very pleased with, as this is an important part of mobility work. Even though I achieved the front bail last week, I'm of course going to keep training it to make it more smooth and to build up to different progressions out of it. I warmed up today by working these onto the mat. Before taking the bales to the rings, I further warmed up with my usual ring sequence. Before working the final bail progression, I did one bail with the rings lower and closer to the pit. I'm no longer scared of the bail, which is awesome. I plan on working it every single ring session. I'll soon start to work on in locating out of it in order to progress to other skills. All in all, I'm very happy with this progress. This drill is slowly starting to feel more natural, though it still needs a lot more work. The main critique for today is that I'm parking my hips when swinging out of the pause. Hips should remain open during the entire swing. I'm just working on cleaning up these circles today. Leg separation, bent legs, high hips, bent arms. We had some well, what were you saying, man? <laughs> Sam did quite a good job of pointing out all the current areas for improvement. Again, I worked check today, though it's still very inconsistent. I continued to work check on the buck between sets. For vault today, I was working purely on handspring. Yeah, better. They're slowly improving each session. Inspired by a recent video I saw showing Chinese elite gymnasts holding handstands for up to 40 minutes, we did just two and a half minute holds, and even this I found really challenging. I don't really ever do this kind of endurance style training, but I found it was a very effective way of changing it up. I find these handstand holds for time really challenging. This is because my shoulder flexion is so bad that I need to recruit other muscles that would otherwise be under a lot less stress if I was in the perfect handstand shape. I really like the challenge though, as training this 
will slowly improve my shoulder flexion as well as my strength in general. I was pushing myself so hard that my ears were actually ringing after the set. I couldn't even hear things properly. This was a really interesting and strange side effect of these handstand holds. We did another set facing the other way with our chest towards the wall. This angle better shows how my limited shoulder flexion is making my traps and shoulders work a lot harder than they should have to. Just look at how far the top of my chest is off the wall compared to the lovely gentleman on my right. Once again, this highlights the importance and value of mobility and how it applies to all different kinds of exercises. I really didn't want to come down before the time was up, though I simply was not able to keep myself up. Recently inspired by the aesthetic beauty of this YouTuber's straddle planche lean, I've been training planche specifically with sets of straddle planche lean, focusing on leaning and lifting off the floor. It was only when I looked at the footage that I realized that I'd get to a point in the lean and then I'd need to slightly pike my hips to lift my feet off the ground. Instead, I need to maintain the strict pelvic tilt and lean further forward to have my feet raise off the ground. Unfortunately, Good. I'm simply yeah. not yet strong enough to do this. Regardless, this exercise feels great and it's really intense on all the right muscles for planche. Anyway, one thing I just wanted to quickly talk about was the gym itself is run by a council who obviously have no idea about gymnastics. So they make a lot of decisions that are really, really silly. They don't make any sense in terms of what the center is for. Obviously, we're there to train gymnastics. That's our main focus. You know, I just want to be able to train as best I can to get as good as I can. Anyway, they frequently seem to have stupid rules or unnecessary things that make training a little bit harder than it should be. An example of that was uh, today, we were told off for not wearing our shirts, the guys, um, because apparently everyone in the center has to wear a shirt at all times. Which is just ridiculous. I mean, this oh, the person saying that obviously has no idea about anything in gymnastics. I mean, he obviously thinks we're just trying to show off by not wearing shirts, but there's obviously a lot of reasons that you don't want to wear a shirt when you're training gymnastics. Number one is there's a risk that you can catch your thumb on your shirt. Wearing a shirt can sometimes hide your body shape, so it makes coaching more difficult. It might sound selfish, but I don't really care what other people looking at me are thinking. All I care about is having the best session I can, getting the best results I can. If I'm sweating, of course I don't want to wear a shirt, it's just disgusting. So anyway, yeah, I'm just uh, letting you guys know that everything's great, but there are a lot of things that happen that are annoying, but if you just get over them and persist, they're not really a problem. And it's just giving you a bit more insight into what my training is like. I warmed up Pommel today, working on this relatively new drill. As discussed previously, there's still quite a few areas that need to be improved. I put a lot of time into training just circles on pommel today. While they are improving, unfortunately they don't yet meet the goal requirements as my arms still bend slightly and my left knee still bends when coming around that last quarter. They're definitely improving though, so hopefully they'll soon meet the criteria. While I didn't achieve this today, I'm very happy with these circles as they're looking so much better and are actually almost aesthetically pleasing. To further my pursuit of circle perfection, I also came to the buck focusing purely on circles. It's easy to be strict on form on the buck as you don't need to stretch out as much as you would when on pommel. These circles look a little slow and closed. Dan gave me a really great tip today about delaying the twist of the hips when your feet are in front of you. Quality hairdo. So I'm just thinking about opening my hips at the front and then delaying the twist of the hip. So going like 
last second. Twist and drive him in the back. So stretch, 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 twist. That really helps, so. I think about stretching as much as I can, as, as long as I can, and delay it, and then twist the hips. So thank you, Dan, for that tip. Here's where you want me to twist. This simple tip immediately improved my circles dramatically. They already look a lot more aesthetic and powerful, though they are just a little bit out of control as I get used to the balance of this new technique. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it immensely. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you, my man, for the tip. What an invaluable tip you provided me with. I got new high bar grips today, as my old grips were quite worn and I didn't want a repeat of what happened on the rings back in week four. Sadly, it took me four attempts to get my first giants in these new grips. They feel a lot harder and thicker than my old ones, so it will take a little bit of time to wear them in. Still, this shouldn't inhibit my ability to perform skills such as giants. might take a while, I'm sorry. With new grips, I don't scrape out the holes like some people do. Instead, I let my fingers force the holes to open wider so that once the grip wears in, it fits my fingers perfectly. The downside is, in these first few sessions with the grips, it takes me about 10 minutes just to take them off because it's just so tight on my fingers. Oh, this is really starting to happen. It's <laughs> that point where it starts to get scared. <laughs> oh, I'm actually getting hot doing this, man. It's starting to sweat. Uh, hang on there, it's coming. Oh, man. <laughs> it doesn't actually look that bad, does it? Not bad at all. That was really, now I got the other good to take off. For some extra motivation, once again I challenged Dan to see who could catch front toss between the boxes first. Unfortunately Dan won the challenge, though this was still an effective way to motivate us both and it definitely improved my front toss. I had a breakthrough on the front toss today. All I need to think about is blocking to handstand. I was previously really struggling to stop myself from going forwards. What helped was trying to go to handstand before doing the somersault. I trained planche at the end of this session and continued to work on the straddle leans. You can see I'm fighting to keep that pelvic tilt, though unfortunately I'm still not strong enough and I do have to pike a little in order to lift my feet off. I will aim to continue reducing the pike as I grow stronger. It's now Saturday night, about 12 hours after the training session this morning. I don't think I've really been progressing on my splits. Well, I am, it's getting better, but it's not getting better quick enough for me to get them fully by the end of this 10 week period. So, I figure I'm going to need to do it more frequently than I currently am. At the moment I'm doing it once a day, so what I'm going to try and do now is stretching every day when I wake up and also every day just before I go to bed and then also stretch at the start and the end of every session. Now this is going to be difficult because I already feel like I don't have any time, but you're going to make that time, right? Just like anything. You might have an excuse like, oh, I don't have enough time, but I'm sure there are things in my day that I can cut down on, like researching random things on the internet. I'm just going to have to sacrifice something like that just so I can stretch more. But you've got to ask yourself, you know, what are you training for and what's important to you? And while I don't really want to stretch anymore, I mean, I'd, it's already tough to do it every day anyway. I'm going to do it because... That's the kind of thing you need to do. At least try to see if that does result in my flexibility improving dramatically. I'm also going to do the same thing for flares, but let's see if we notice any improvement now that I'm going to be training flares twice a day. So that should get me past the point that I'm stuck at, hopefully, and should allow me to achieve the splits in just three weeks' time. That's it for week six. 
There were just three sessions this week due to gyms closing for public holidays. Next week is mentally challenging due to lack of progress on certain skills. You'll get to see how I work through these tough times with persistence. And if you have any questions, please comment them below and I may answer them in next week's episode. See you next Thursday for week seven.